this is our quick test of the Epiphan. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced, Epiphan. The, the name looks like Epiphany, but without the Y. Why? Because we need a USB 3 Linux capture solution. That's why. I'm gonna take a look at this, and I'm gonna take a look at this with Linux, an open broadcaster. Nice. Smart packaging. So this is the setup that we've got for the packaging. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Got uh, some air vents on the back and some on the front. HDMI on one side, USB 3.0 on the other. So this should be a pretty solid capture device in terms of like construction. So this thing is all heat sink. It's a nice USB 3.0, three foot cable. It's perfect for use on a desktop or use with a portable computer or something like that. Also in the box is a nice StarTech HDMI cable. 3.3 feet, one meter. HDMI 19 pin. This just goes to show you how hard it is to get a good HDMI cable. HDMI, the cables run the gamut. There are some HDMI cables out there that don't even properly work with 1080p. And so with all the modern standards, HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2, the you know 422 Chroma, all this kind of thing, it is hard to find a good high quality HDMI cable sometimes. And then this is literally it for documentation. They register the product to activate the warranty, connect the cables, and basically you're good to go. There literally is no software with this, which is, which is fine. We're going to use Open Broadcaster anyway. So, all right, let's get it hooked up and see how that goes. Anyway, this is the Epifan 4K. It's sort of under my camera there, but I'm shooting up. But as you can see, I'm capturing 4K video in Open Broadcaster in Linux as a video for a Linux device. Basically, this is a trouble-free operation. The only problems that you're going to run into is when you're trying to do 4K at 422. Now, this capture card will capture and compress in hardware uh, a 422 signal, but there's just not enough bandwidth, even with the compression, to deal with 4K and a 422 chroma space. So this camera outputs 422 by default, and so unless you go in and fiddle with settings, you're gonna have a really terrible frame rate. Now you can downscale in hardware, 1080p, something like that, but you're gonna use the Windows utility or the Mac OS utility in order to do it. They are working on a Linux utility. It's also really heavily tested with uh, Ubuntu, the long-term support version. I'm using Fedora 25, um, so I did have to fiddle with things a little bit in order to get it working. Nothing too, you know, nothing too crazy to actually get that working. Just had to download a few packages and install them, but, but basically it was okay. This capture card works pretty impressively in Linux, all things considered. So what about things like game console capture and other types of capture? Well, you can capture from the PS4 and the Xbox One. It recently had a firmware update to improve those, those compatibility with those devices. It does not have HDMI out. That's the only weird thing. So if you're going to do a console capture, you're gonna to have to run your console out to an HDMI splitter, and then one side of the splitter into your television, and the other side into the capture device. That's really the only problem is that it doesn't have HDMI out, so if you're using it as your actual monitor, that's a little bit problematic. Well, what about USB latency, you say? The USB latency is as good as you can expect. Um, the other USB capture solution that we had was a, was like an Aver Live Gamer HD 2 or something. It died mysteriously. I have no idea what happened. It just, the LED was just blinking one day. It was out of warranty, done, whatever. Uh, the latency on that device was at least a half a second. The delay on this one is very, very small. I, it's, I mean, when you move the mouse cursor, you can tell that it's lagging behind a little bit, but... I don't think it's more than 100 milliseconds. I think it's on the order of about 50 milliseconds, which for, you know, capturing the footage, compressing it, sending it down the wire, and then decompressing it in OBS, 50 to 100 milliseconds is actually really impressive. Now, we're gonna be using it for capturing the BIOS screens. So we're talking oddball resolutions, oddball refresh rates. And so far it's been able to deal with those as we've thrown it at them. Honestly, the worst experience that I've had has been dealing with the 422 color space. Now, OBS on Windows, is a little different, and that's also really surprising. So OBS on Windows, you can go in the hardware settings and the actual compression settings, and OBS seems to be a little bit more aware of this type of hardware. There seems to be some type of pass-through compression or something like that. So instead of using software X264, as I have to do on Linux, I can actually just pass through the hardware compression from the device into Open Broadcaster, so I don't have to like decompress and recompress the signal or anything like that. So on Windows, it seems like it's a little bit more performant. I did not test this on a Mac, although it is supported on a Mac and you can use it on a Mac. So that, that might be an option for you if you're looking for that. I also tried it with the Surface Book. 
buying it with the Surface Book was a frustrating experience. It kind of worked, but then it didn't. And I'm probably going to say, uh, I'm going to say that that's very likely because the Surface Book just can't supply enough USB power to drive that thing. The USB ports on the Surface Book are sketchy enough as it is. I also tried it with a docking station, but the docking stations, anybody with a Surface Book can tell you the docking stations are also sketchy a little bit. So yeah, it, there was not enough power apparently to drive it. I did not try it with a powered USB 3 hub. That should be on my to-do list. Don't actually have a powered USB 3 hub uh, that I could use for projects like this. It's not doing something important. So I did not try it with a powered USB 3 hub. It might work on a Surface Book with a powered USB 3 hub because it was kind of working at one point on the Surface Book. Other than that, it's basically a plug and play experience, which is really impressive. I'm, I'm actually really surprised. There are also really interesting edge use cases. So like if you do a lot of business meetings and you need to look really just beyond amazing in Skype, you could pick up one of these and use it as your Skype camera. Now this is the 4K version. They have a little bit less expensive version that does 1080p capture. The 1080p capture version might be a better bet if you're gonna use something like this for Skype or video conferencing. But because it is a UVC video device, it just shows up, it just works. So you wanna use it for Skype or other video conferencing software. I use Skype as kind of a generic term. I don't really necessarily mean Skype, but if you wanna use it just as a generic device for video conferencing and as a generic video device, it basically works with all software um, that expects a generic video device like a webcam because of the way that it's architected. That's a really, really nice feature. I know a lot of you know business types and executives and things like that who want you know a really top-notch video conferencing. They want a really nice picture and sound. And, you know, a snowball plus this plus a reasonable camera. You can get one of the Blackmagic cameras that's direct HDMI out, you know, 1080p or a dime a dozen. It actually works really, really well. It's really impressive. So overall, what's the verdict on this thing? Uh, well, right now the retail price U.S. is like 400 which isn't bad for a capture device. I think some PCIe capture uh, options at 4K are, are a little bit less expensive. But you know, I haven't tried a 4K capture option that is not at least a little bit fiddly in some way. Um, our main capture rig has Blackmagic capture cards. We use those on Linux and Windows. And uh, they're a little bit fiddly, a little bit sketchy, no matter what you do. This, even though it's USB, I mean, USB is gonna come with inherent, you know, USB-ness. But for a portable capture device, it's actually really, really impressive. It actually works really well. And I have not got the mileage with this, that I do on Linux yet, but we're gonna be using this for our, you know, our UEFI capture and our BIOS capture and things like that. So be sure to hit us up in the forums if you're thinking about buying one of these because chances are you're watching this at some point in the future and we will have a lot more mileage with this. But so far it's really impressive and it's done everything that we've thrown at it. And the weirdest thing is that you have to go in and explicitly set your configuration if you're gonna do the 422 capture. Basically it. Overall, it's a good product I think, it's actually, it's actually very impressive. So if you're thinking about getting one or you got one and you wanna share experiences, good or bad, please do hit us up in the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and you can find us there.